Harold! Harold! Where is Harold? Harold! What is that? Harold! I think I see him. Ah, there he is. Hey, Harold! Get this. Hey, Harold. Hey. What? It's pork o'clock. It's pork o'clock? It's pork o'clock. Let's go. Wake up. Woo. Are you ready? Ready to okay, rumble? Guys. We're ready. Y'all ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Now he's giving us a little safety course here and uh, you know told us that it's all gonna be okay. Texans they do this every morning. This is how they eat. And uh, yeah, let's roll. Oh, all right. Hold on. Oh wow, check, come and check this out. We got, we're, ready to, we're ready to roll here. We've got the, the magazines ready. Here's your weapon. Yep. All right. All right, Marsh, your headphones are right above you. These ones? Yeah, microphone's gonna go on your left side, left cheek. Put the belt on? Or? Yeah, that'd be a good idea. <laughs> okay. <laughs> need to stand, Dusty. Sir? How far back do we need to stand? It don't matter, just uh, put your hat backwards, JT, because the the wash will knock it off. You ready? I'm ready. <laughs> I think it's Chanel's the far one. Yeah.
The lands you see us flying over here are all privately owned Texas farms or game ranches where a variety of animals graze around freely. Exotic species from all over the world, including axis deer from India, was imported here in the 1930s for hunting purposes. Around the same time, some of these ranches also imported wild Russian boars for the same purpose. Some were set out into the wild, others kept in captivity. However, with their expertise in rooting up soil and even scaling walls, many also destroyed the fencing men to keep them in and escaped. In the wild, these Russian boars interbred with feral hogs, meaning pigs that were once domesticated but have now gone back to live in the wild. Said hogs have been roaming around here since the Spanish conquistadors brought them as a food supply while exploring what is today southern United States. Often, said conquistadors would also leave hogs behind, knowing they are capable of surviving on anything and virtually anywhere, thus ensuring an easily accessible food supply for future expeditions. In the years since, these pigs have been incredibly successful as a species and have established themselves across multiple states. In Texas alone, their numbers stand at an estimated 2.6 million. And so what? What's the problem? Why not just let them roam around like the axis and whitetail dare do? According to an article in National Geographic, many researchers consider these hogs the most destructive invasive species on the planet. Here are just some of the negatives associated with them that applies locally here in Texas. For starters, these pigs are omnivores, meaning they can live on plants and meat. This means they kill the fawns, i.e. young axis and white-tailed deers, which is the animals these ranches are built to sustain. And when they go for plants or smell something exotic potentially buried under a field of grass, they don't behave any better. Unlike cattle, which graze a field until the grass is too short to chew up, hogs use their tusks to root up the grass all the way down to the soil. This destroys the fields, ensuring grass and plants may not be able to grow back. Instead, you're left with mud and dirt. They also eat the food from deer feeders, which is meant to sustain the deer population as well as cause immense property damage to fencing and other structures. The owners of these farms really have no other way of managing the problem than to put these hogs down. But that is easier said than done. They mate year-round and one so, meaning a female pig, can give birth three times a year to a dozen piglets. These lands are also riddled with rattlesnakes and, as you can see here from the air, are rather inaccessible by foot. On top of that, the hogs have responded to being hunted by becoming increasingly nocturnal, meaning they hide during the day and come active only at night when they've learned there's less danger in the form of human hunters about. They are also actually incredibly smart and can detect odors from up to 10 kilometers or 7 miles away. This explains why helicopter hog hunting was invented to try and keep the hog population in check. At first the farms used to pay teams of hunters to clean up their farms. That however cost a lot of money and wasn't really a sustainable solution. And that's how a group of guys, which included Dustin, the pilot sitting next to me here, came up with the idea of charging tourists to do this for them. As a result the hog population goes down, their population up, crops and fields stay productive and the owners of them get to keep more of their money whilst helicopter companies like Dustin's make money. So as we're flying out here I must admit I was feeling a bit queasy. I'd only ever been in a helicopter once before and that was just a week prior in Las Vegas. As long as the helicopter flew straight though, I was fine. But when it started flying sideways back and forth and circling around the brushwood in an attempt to trick the hogs to reveal themselves in a panicked run for greater cover, it was impossible not to feel a little seasick. John at the back here was really struggling with this and said multiple times that he was about to hurl. It didn't help that spotting the first hog was incredibly difficult. We saw countless deers and herds of cattle but no hogs. 
Dustin postulates that the incredibly rare sub-zero temperatures Texas experienced last winter may have actually killed off a lot of the wildlife, including many hogs, as these lands here never really experienced snow and freezing temperatures. Only the strongest and fattest of hogs survived. Top spots for sighting hogs are around dried out riverbeds or watering holes. The lands we're flying over right here though, he hasn't flown over since that great Texas freeze. Again, there were plenty of deer and cattle, even wild rabbits, but zero signs of any hogs. Over the years, the hogs have learned to associate the sound of the helicopter with great danger. They know something is up. As long as they stay still under the bushes, we won't be able to spot them. When the helicopter flies too close though, they will eventually panic and make a run for it. Dusty pulled these maneuvers again and again, with John getting increasingly queasy in the back seat, but there seemed to be no hogs around today. After flying for what felt like close to an hour, Dusty suddenly announced, Harold, I've got one for you. We got it. Probably over three three hundred. Pull him out, yeah? Yeah. Ah Whoa. Ah. There we go. Woo! Congratulations. Okay. Yeah. Good flying. That's a big one. Well done. <laughs> Where do they come from? Yeah, he's out now. Nobody really knows, John. I mean, some people say on front, some people say on the board. But who knows? That's a big one. That took a while. We flew around. How long have we flying for? Maybe 20 minutes? Nah, longer than that. Longer, yeah? Yeah, probably about 30. Oh, okay, 35 yeah. 35 minutes, yeah. John started to feel a bit iffy as well. Yeah. Yeah, when we were talking like that, I was going. <laughs> I was like, oh man. It feels like a roller coaster. Yeah. You kind of, when you're gliding back and forth, yeah. and like what it does, so I'll try and capture it on film, but you kind of, I see you, you're gliding a bit back and forth, and you get a, like a big overview of the, of the bush. Exactly. And yeah. Try and scare them out. Yeah, you're trying to flush them out, is what you're doing. Yeah, I don't know how audible, you know, the things we, we spoke about in the helicopter is and so on, but yeah, maybe we'll do some voiceover or something yeah. afterwards. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, you can explain kind of how. How we're trying to look for him, yeah. how, what we're seeing, what yeah. we're so like like this one, you know, he's got the tusk, so that's that's the board. How did you that's spot him? Man, just look at a brush. Just look at a brush. They started moving and yeah, then he, the he brush started, started running. moving. So I never saw him first. We saw the brush move first and then he flushed out. So they start running because of the blade. Because of the noise, exactly. So he's big, so he's probably it's not the first time he's heard a helicopter, no, is it? No. Nah, he's probably seen it multiple times. He's your breeder. He's the male. All right, so we got him. We got him. And that's what we do. 
How'd that feel? That was awesome. I mean, awesome. just flying over there, just, oh man. Just wait, you're next. You look perfect. You look you're next. Like, you look like a... That was good, huh? Yeah, oh, it was amazing. Little, little difficult to kind of aim, but... You shot him multiple times, here? Yeah, here? but, but I, I wasn't paying attention, so you said, go True. for the head. Yeah. I was just aiming for exactly. the... Yeah. Exactly, once you slowed him down, yeah, when you saw it, he, he went over here, then he turned back, so he was hit. He slowed down, Yeah. and one, you, then you could take your time and start aiming for the head. Yeah. The best spot to hit him, is right there. Right here. Okay. It's right there. This is where their shield is, right in Yeah, here. that's what I was hitting. Yeah. Should I take it? Yeah. yeah. All right, are we, are we ready to rumble again? How do you feel? Uh, I'm good now. Let's go. All right. Back to the chopper. So my plan was to bring whatever I put down back into the chopper for an epic poker clock back at the Airbnb. With one this size however, that was not possible as it was simply too big and heavy to fit in the chopper. Plus we had more hogs to hunt. So off we went scouting for more. Just a note on what it's like shooting an AR-15 from a flying helicopter at a moving target. Before taking off, Dusty gave me a little crash course in how to aim. Rather than close one eye as you would with a rifle on the ground, the key here was to keep both eyes open. There's no magnifying aim on the rifle scope here as you gotta be somewhat aware of your surroundings. Your legs, the rotor blades, etc. So things don't literally come crashing down to the ground whilst up here. Other than that, you gotta just get a feel for how close you are to the target, judging from the dust cloud created by the bullet as it hits the ground. With 12 rounds to a magazine, chances are you're gonna get it eventually. I'm not sure with which bullet I hit it with first. Could have been one of the early shots, as I didn't see all of them hitting the sand, but I don't know for sure.
After another 20 minutes or so in the air, we spotted a group of tree hogs. Amazingly, and you can see this here in the footage, although it is a bit grainy, one of the hogs collided into a white-tailed deer as they were scrabbling to get away from the Northman's poor control patrol and our overwhelming air superiority. The deer quickly changed direction after the collision and John could finally have a go with his first hog. After two hours we were left with four dead hogs. If you come in the winter, you can add another zero to that tally.
I think we flew for an hour before we found the pig. Didn't yeah, we? it took us a while. Yeah, it was 50, 51 minutes before we found the pig. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you got the biggest pig. Yeah, you did. out of everybody. And you got a trophy pig. I mean, I mean that's that's a big. I pig. wish we I wish we could have. I mean, this thing was heavy. I wish we could have dragged it into the helicopter yeah. and had like the greatest poker clock of all time. That would have yeah. been like the worst thing you ever did in your whole life. <laughs> We'd have been eating fleas and ticks yeah. off of our oh, nasty. chest hair. Yeah. This time of year, man, they're, they're, I mean, literally, you, it looks like their skin is crawling. There are so many bugs on them. Oh, yeah, wow. It would have been yeah. nasty. Yeah. Yeah. Harold reached right under there, and he grabbed well, that. Oh, no, Harold wanted yeah. it. He was yeah. a beast. I wanted him. I wanted him in the chopper. But, uh, yeah, it would have been, it been too big. He grabbed it by the mangoes and showed it who was <laughs> right. man. This is how That's he did right. in Texas. Yeah. So how exactly do you spot the pigs? So uh, what are you looking for? You're, the first thing you look for, obviously, is water. Like today, it's got hot, you know. So you look for water. And then once you find water, you look for rooting. We saw a couple of ponds. Yes. And was that so? The first pig was that after we had spotted water? Correct. Or? We were around. No, that one we were around a deer feeder. So remember when I was, we were flying around? I was saying, look, look for, look for rooting, look for feed, look for deer feeders, and and that's what those pigs will do is they'll get in the deer feed errs and and pretty much eat all the protein or corn again that's why we do this because that's an expense we don't feed pigs we feed deer you know to grow them bigger well when you get pigs in the in the feed that's taken away from the deer so that costs us money and that's why we do it from the that's helicopter. ultimately why the pigs have to go exactly exactly so how, how many pigs are out there on any on any given well, farm there? there's uh yeah between farms hundreds of thousands oh wow yeah yeah, just, I mean, just the state of Texas of, of, alone, you know, Texas, we're in it for the ranching, the farming. That's the biggest thing. Um, and, and the reason why we do this also is we eat the crops. Everybody here in Texas does, even in the United States. And so you got to, you have to understand the diseases and the, the ticks and fleas that these pigs carry. You don't want that, you know, uh, you don't want that in the, the corn and vegetables. And so once again, that's why we hunt them. Uh, we do it a lot for the corn farmers. That's the biggest uh attraction to a pig is is corn because the farmers water they water daily and so what are pigs attracted to water yeah and so water when it's a hot day water cools the atmosphere around them pretty much and so they'll go lay up well thank you so much thank you buddy. that was that was amazing thank i'll be you. back yes sir uh hopefully then in february or something that's the best time that's right yeah february march okay. we'll do it all right awesome keep it texas i shall i shall <laughs> should we get going guys Talk to John. <laughs> How awesome was that? That was the craziest, most awesome thing I've ever fucking done. What, what do you, you say? Coming, that was the craziest thing I've ever done. Thank Same. you for coming up with it. Thank you for. Uh, uh, Thanks for setting it up, man. This. Yeah, yeah. I... We are having a. Uh, we're going to the gas station, or yeah, let's go to a gas station or a McDonald's or something. I need to get uh, puke taste out of my mouth. Man, I wish I had that on film. I was violently puking in that chopper as you were trying to kill the fourth pig. <laughs> and I felt bad because I ruined her. It's going to be the greatest Dr. Pepper ever. What's that? This is very Texas. Drive up to the gas station. Oh, you're right. And there's a, a shot shotgun shell. At the gas station. At the gas station. All right. Nice Texas. That makes sense. Oh no, those tacos I had back here. And I took off. I had them sitting on here. Oh no. <laughs> I guess we lost our food. Thank you. Come on, where's the Dr. Pepper machine? Oh, here we go. I love this. This is my favorite thing about America, other than shooting pigs from helicopters.
sorry. What are you getting? Something carbonated. Something that's gonna make my stomach feel better. Cherry Coke. You think they have gongo here? <clears throat> I don't think they would, but you might have to ask. Okay. I would like to spice up my Dr. Pepper, you know, with Africa's finest. Hey. Hey. You know, I was looking for the gongo. No. What? The gongo. It's gongo. Yeah. It's not. Are you out? Out of what? Is it sold out? No. It's not. No. So where is it? You're looking for mango. Gongo. What gongo? Is is a drink? You don't have it. No. Okay. Never heard of gongo. Oh, it's, maybe it hasn't come to Texas yet. Maybe not. All right. Just a Dr Pepper. What are you having? I'm having cherry coke. Oh, okay, cherry coke then. Why is there a dog barking in your pocket? <laughs> 388. All right. What are you doing in Texas? We are shooting pigs from helicopters. What? We are shooting hogs from helicopters. Sounds like fun. It was. It was a lot of fun. Thank you. It's okay. How many did you kill? Uh, I killed two. My friend killed one and, and a half. half. Where you get the hat? He was little. We had to abort midair because I started puking, so then we had to fly back. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, my my weak stomach. Wild, wild, wild. That one too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> puking fart. <laughs> you should try it. It was a lot of fun. Uh, yeah. You take medicine before you get up in a helicopter. So uh, you puke. Yeah, but I didn't know I was gonna get sick, so no? I never been in one before, so. All right, have a good day. All right, you too. Hope you have some gongo next time. Uh, I'll find out and see what that is. All right, please do it. Google gongo. Gongo. Gongo okay. Tanzania. Gongo Tanzania. Okay. All right, see you later. Bye. Bye-bye. She was a good sport. Yeah, it's awesome. Maybe um, we're going to be the ones responsible for bringing gongo to the fine people of Texas. I think the people in Texas would love some gongo, for sure. The day has not ended. We are now going to do another thing that you can pretty much only do in Texas. And what kind of shop are we going this to? This is like one-stop Texas shopping night. Anything that you want, Texas-wise, is going to be in this store. And what are we getting in here? Well, we're going to get food, but they've got guns, ammunition, and we're here for tannerite and food. So, uh, If you don't know what tannerite is, uh, you're, you're not tomorrow. alone because neither do I. Yeah. So let's just stay tuned and see what that is. in this town. All right, it is pork o'clock. Let's see if we can find a pork chop then, since we couldn't... Uh... Oh, he told me the pork that you guys killed were perfect for eating, oh, yes. but you couldn't land. Mm, yeah. Was that your shot? Uh, I got him in the leg, then he shot him twice in the body. Oh, you're both shooting at the same time? Yeah. So what is this tannerite thing? It's an explosive, and it blows up. You shoot it, and it blows up. Oh, wow, here we get the gun store. Tell so. me they just got that on a shelf. Yeah, yeah. dude. So you just mix it together, you put it in one of these, and you shoot it. With anything more powerful than a 22 will set it off and it blows up. I actually, <laughs> the guy that set us up with Dusty to go hog hunting, he's got a son that just turned five, and I bought him this for his birthday for the son. <laughs> That's one of the most Texas things I've ever heard. You yeah. bought a five-year-old kid some tanner. Right? This whole Josh shop here. is very Texas yeah. with all these dead animals. Oh, right, hey, so here, Look, that's this the is a javelina. Remember the pigs I was telling you about? Oh, so that's a tasty one? This is what we actually have native to Texas. Those pigs we were shooting aren't native to Texas. This is the Texas pig. And they're tasty. Eh, it's kind of a disgusting yeah, animal. Yeah. They're in the hey, same don't talk family. about pigs like that. They, the they have a, a muscat. The greatest animal yeah. known to mankind. They have a muscat, like a skunk. It's actually more closely related to a skunk than a pig. It's not even in the pig family. Well, I think it's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> That's the bobcats he told us. John is just a pork hater. No, I just like certain pork. <laughs> oh man, a water buffalo? <laughs> That's 
plastic cases or the A Dallas sheep? A bear? A mountain goat? An elk? A turkey? A gazelle? A mountain lion? Man, and this goes all the way. Look at this. Serge, have you seen the amount of dead animals in this shop? Yes, it is. comes complete with earplugs. <laughs> oh, does it? Yeah, there's earplugs with the big pack. Is it loud? Loud as hell? It's not much louder than the gunshot itself, but it's like two separate blasts. It's the gun, and then depending on how far away you are, that shit blows up too. Wow. Yeah, I got one of those hanging on my wall. Wow. So I was told that if we'd gone down into the bushes, you know, kind of where we landed with a helicopter, but if you started walking around there, you'd run into one of these within a couple of hundred yards and you have to be wearing boots like this or else it's the end of you, not just your foot. Wow, what a beast. I was showing Harold this one. The safety radius is 200 yards away, so this one must really freaking blow up. There's now, what's this actually used for? Targets. Target Targets. practice. Yeah, that's it. It makes a, it's like, so for like long range shooting like he was doing when, when he got the shiner. Make sure you knew you did. So that you can see it. It, it. Boom, it's like a big plume of smoke. Oh, that's what you call it, a shiner. A shiner, yeah. Okay, a shiner. Yeah. Normally you get one of those drinking shiner and shiner, but you got one shooting a rifle, so. Well, I, I showed him the shiner bought beer. Yes, yeah, that's, like that's what y'all should have been drinking instead yeah. of Lone Star Piss. Well, we just said uh, uh, we wanted Texas. Uh, your your uh, beer was much better, the one from... From China. Is that what it's called? Yeah, the yellow. Yeah, yeah. Yellow label. Oh, yeah that was yeah. a good one. Yeah, that's that's, that's the real one. I'll show you guys one day on film. There, There is good beer here. There it doesn't is. have to be that, that Lone Star. Yeah, that Lone Star is Armadillo Piss. Armadillo Piss. I liked it. <laughs> <laughs> it. It worked going down that river, and uh, uh, they went really fast. Yeah. It was like... Uh, uh, Next thing you know, all the beers are gone. And, and according to Skyler, you stay surprisingly sober. <laughs> yeah, he, he sure was. Wasn't he? he was so sober. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Sober as a priest on Sunday. Yeah. I think he was sober. Now this is the real Texas beer. Ah, this is what we spoke this about that I was going to... supposed to be, but you only get this after you become an honorary Texan. Okay. And you now are officially an honorary Texan that shoots hogs from helicopters. Not a Texan before you, you, you uh, get your pork o'clock from the air. That is true. Cheers. So cheers. To the new Texan. Well, thanks for welcoming me into the fold.